Hey, Jody here, WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today's video is about dual shield flux core welding, where you use a flux core wire as well as a shielding gas. Let's get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and get right into some welding here today. This is just a 2F T-joint, and later on in the video, toward the end, we'll talk about some of the details. No real manipulation of the electrode is required on running stringer beads like this, just a straight up drag with a drag angle. There's an old saying, if it's got slag, you drag, and that kind of applies here. I'm not saying you can't push it, but to to uh, you know to do it per the book, you need to drag it when you have uh, dual shield flux core as well as self-shielded flux core. But with welding, it seems to be an exception to every rule. So, you know, if you get in a, a spot where you have to push instead of drag, as long as you keep that flux behind you, you can be okay. I place that second bead about two-thirds over the first bead, and that just leaves a nice little groove for me to follow the, the edge of that weld just straight up and just, you know, try to make a fairly even fillet weld that's stacked nice and evenly where this bead is just about halfway over the previous bead. All right, let's go for uphill now. This is the same T-joint. This is a quarter-inch thickness. That's roughly six millimeters thick. What you want to do is you want to maintain the same gun angle all the way up the joint. What you don't want to do is do this. Let it let it cock upward as you go up. If you, if you get off a little bit, it's okay, but if you shoot for 90 degrees, straight dead nuts in 90 degrees, you'll probably wind up with a slight push angle and you'll still be okay. When that helmet drops, you lose a little bit, you lose track of your gun angle a little bit. And so I'm using a, like a series of little triangle technique here. And it's a fairly fast motion, just uh, going slow enough to avoid any undercut. And that was the best technique that I found. I tried others, but that's the best thing I found for this particular joint. I used 23 volts and 260 inches per minute of wire feed speed, and I'm using 045 wire. And, and you still fight that little crown in the middle. That just seems to be typical going vertical uphill no matter what process you're using, if it's MIG with bare wire or flux core or what. So I'm showing here that little series of triangles. This is a lap joint, but it illustrates it very well This with bare wire MIG, just because I got a good shot of it in a previous video. And I thought it would help to kind of compare it to this, this uh, gas shielded flux core video. So I'm making a series of triangles here, and what that does is it traces the front or leading edge of the puddle, and that's usually a good thing. There's another method here where you do a series of upside-down Vs that also traces the front of the puddle, which for me works really well on bare wire MIG, but not as well with this gas-shielded gas shielded flux core. It's getting in there. Definitely is a good method to use to penetrate into the corner, into the root of the joint. It just, it just to me, it's just a little choppy. And it's, the reason it's dark here is because it's getting dark outside. I have to use the, my little lighted chipping hammer. And now I'm going to go over really quickly some things that are important when you're dealing with gas shielded flux core: drive rollers, contact tip and extension, nozzle dip, polarity. Shielding gas and the stick out, also known as CTWT or contact tip to work distance, and then your settings like voltage and wire feed speed. Flux core wire is hollow. The flux is in the middle, so it's hollow and can be crushed. So if you have to use a lot of tension on the tensioners, you can crush it and have feeding problems. So knurled rollers that are the right size are the way to go. You can use less tension and still push the wire through the liner. This particular wire recommends uh, three quarters of an inch stick out. So it, I've got to have my contact tip roughly flush with the nozzle in order to get that in a T-joint. And so that's why I have this thing just about flush or slightly sticking out. Nozzle dip, is it necessary? Eh, it helps a lot. And if you're in a pinch, you can definitely get by with some Vaseline. And no MSDS required for something that you can rub on a baby's butt. So there you go. Polarity. In this particular wire, it's recommended DC electrode positive. So I've got the ground clamp hooked up to the negative. C25 gas, that's 7525 argon CO2 gas, roughly 25 to 30 CFH. This particular wire can be run with straight CO2 or an argon CO2 mix. 
Let's talk about the settings for a minute. Where do you go to find a good starting point for settings? In this particular machine that I was using today, there's a chart on the inside of the door like a lot of welders have, and it's got an error on it. It's calling out DC straight polarity for E71T-1. That's wrong. It needs DC reverse polarity, electrode positive. So you can't always rely on charts. Also, the, the settings here are generally for flat and horizontal. So when you go vertical uphill, things are really hot. So what I do is I'll drop down a thickness or two, and it gets me in the ballpark. For instance, th today I was welding a quarter inch. I use the settings for 3 16 for vertical uphill. A much better resource that I found was this. It's called the Procedure Handbook of Welding from the James F. Lincoln Foundation. And it's got a section in there for gas shielded flux core and it's much more accurate settings. I'll show you that in just a minute. That, the reason it's more accurate is because it's got separate charts for separate positions. As you can see right here, it says this one's written for overhead as well as vertical uphill. Now this particular chart's written with CO2 shielding gas in mind. Just know you're going to use slightly less voltage with an argon CO2 mix. Plate thickness a quarter inch and up. One or more passes. Electrode class E71T-1. That's key. You know, different brand names can have different proprietary names, but this is the class. And I'm using 045 wire. That's 1.1 millimeter wire. Wire feed speed, 275 to 340. That's a decent narrow range. You know, I've seen some charts that say 200 to 800. You know, that doesn't really help me a lot. Current, DC plus, the electrode positive polarity, very important. See, the chart on the machine was wrong. Voltage, 25 to 27, and since this chart is for CO2, I know I'm going to need a little less voltage than that for the, the uh, argon CO2 mixed gas. The stick out, 3 quarters of an inch, and then for vertical up, a slight push angle of 5 degrees, or if I'm doing overhead, a drag angle of 50 degrees. All right, so I, I like to tell everybody about this because it's such a good deal. It's $30 right now from jflf.org. A book, a comparable book like this from the American Welding Society would be as much as $200, maybe even more. Now, a little side note here, it's not going to help you if you live outside the U.S. because uh, shipping will just kill you, but if you're inside the U.S. and you want a great little book for parameters for flux core and MIG and all that stuff, this is a great book. Well, that about wraps it up. I appreciate you spending time on my channel. We'll see you next time.